Have you ever wanted to cloud monitor your Catalyst switches and actually use your DNA licensing? Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about in today's video. So if you're new to my channel, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. And if you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up. So let's break down what we're actually going to talk about today. A little while back, Cisco announced two ways of getting your Catalyst switches into your Meraki dashboard. There was either monitor mode or manage mode. And we're not going to talk too much about manage mode today, but basically what that is, is you take a Catalyst 9300, you rip off iOS XE on it, you drop on a Meraki code and you manage it into the Meraki dashboard, just like you would an MS390 switch. That's what all we're going to talk about on that front. What we're really going to break down is taking Catalyst switches, 9200, 9300, 9500, taking telemetry information off those switches while they're still running iOS XE and sending it up to the Meraki dashboard. Now, in today's video, we're going to go over a demo. I'm going to show you guys how to get that done. But first, let's take a look at the prereq information that you need in order to make this successful. And here's that pre-onboarding checklist that I was talking about. And I'll post a link to this in the description so you guys have it. But at the top here, here are all the switches that are supported. So your 9200s are supported, including the L9300, 9300L, 9300Xs, and the 9500. You need to be running iOS XE 17.3.1 or higher for this to work. And then it's going to go through and talk about some of the stuff that you need to do on the Meraki dashboard. I'm going to walk you guys through that all live so you know about that. That's how we grab the API key and everything. But if you go down a little bit more... The important stuff that you need to do on your switch via CLI before you do anything is the stuff that starts right here. So number one, you need to make sure we have connectivity out to the internet. You might have to go into your firewall, make some configuration changes. That's all documented here. You will need to go in your switch and turn on uh, Telnet and make sure that we have a command under your line VTY configuration. That's transport output Telnet or transport output all. Once you get that done, there's a bunch of other configurations that you need to make sure you have in your switch. If this is actually in production, a lot of this is going to be done already for you. It needs to have an IP address on it. it has to have IP routing enabled. It has to have uh, a, a DNS server on it to be, to be able to get out and look up domain names. Um, NTP needs to be set and AAA new model needs to be set. And then the last thing is you need access into your switch via SSH. I'm not going to go into any of this stuff here. All the commands are listed literally right here, except for what you need to do for SSH, but you can always YouTube that or look that up online somewhere. And now we're going to go over to the Meraki dashboard to make sure that this is set up correctly. So the first thing is you're going to want to make sure that you have a either a combined network or a switch network on here. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to go under organization. We're going to click on inventory. And at the top here, there's a little note that says to add Catalyst switches to your dashboard, click here. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to open up a application. So make sure your computer that you're downloading this application to has access to the network. It's going to have to have IP access to all your switches. So you can download it from Mac, Windows, or Linux. Go ahead, download that application and open it up. One more step before we actually use that application, we're going to want to make sure we have our API key. So let's go grab that now. So under organization, we're going to go over to settings. And number one, we're going to make sure that we have API access enabled. So make sure you have that box checked. Once that's checked, go up to your profile at the top right there. And we are going to go down to API access key. I've already generated this one, but if you didn't yet, this would just be blank and you can click on generate new API key. Copy that and let's go into the application we just downloaded. Once you're in, you're going to go ahead at the bottom, click agree and continue. Then this is where we're going to have to go in and paste in our API key, then click start. Now, depending on how quickly you grab that API key, it could take a minute or two to get to this page here. So if you get an error when you hit start, give it a minute, hit start again, and then it should let you right in here. Now it's going to pull in all the information through the API. You're going to select what organization that you want to put this Catalyst device on or devices. So I'm going to go ahead and pick my Sanguich network. Next, you're going to go ahead and put the IP address of the devices you want to onboard. And you can put in multiple devices here. I'm just going to do one because I only have one switch that we're going to play around with now. Credentials, this is your SSH credentials. Go ahead and click next when you get that done. Then we need to do the onboarding pre-check. So go ahead, click start. And if you configured everything correctly, 
we should get a nice green checkbox here. And you can take a look here. It says ready for onboarding. Everything worked out perfectly. Go ahead and click next. And then we're gonna go ahead and select the network. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put it on my Sanguich network. Click on next here. And if you wanna take a look at what configurations are actually gonna be pushed down, this is what's gonna be pushed down to your switch. So you can take a look at all those commands right here. If you're satisfied with it, click on that checkbox there and go ahead and hit next. Then you're gonna get this box here. Go ahead, hit save. And it'll probably stay here for a second, waiting for device to be available. You can click on the down arrow here. Uh, in my experience, it takes three or four tries for it to go through. And then all of a sudden we're gonna get a green checkbox here. And device is connected successfully. So we'll go ahead and click next here. We take a look that says device is connected successfully. Uh, you can get a little customer experience survey there. You can click out of that and then you're done. Now you can go back in and add more devices, but let's go over to the Meraki dashboard and take a look at what it looks like inside of there. Back on dashboard. The first thing I want to do is I want to actually take a look to make sure this thing got in here correctly. So I'm going to go under switching, click on switches, and hopefully we should see our 9300 switch. And we do. So you can see right now it's online. The name of the switch is my core switch. It's at my house. It's just the core for my house. It's in monitor mode only. MAC address, still running iOS XE. Remember, we're doing monitor mode, not managed mode. If this was managed mode, I wouldn't have CLI access. I wouldn't be able to do anything. But because we're monitor, I still have CLI access and everything. Show me how many clients are connected to my switch, what the usage is, the serial number, the model number. And if you want to change any of these, you can go under the little gear here and you can update what those headings are right from here. Now I'm going to keep walking through this here. And first I'm going to show off DNA Advantage. So these are the features you're going to get with DNA Advantage. Then I'm going to flip it around and show off Essentials and you can kind of see what you lose by, by only having DNA Essentials on your switch. So let's go into my core switch just by clicking on it there. And just like any other Meraki device that you have plugged in, it's going to give you the picture of it at the top here. You can take a look at the switch ports that are currently enabled. And we are running CDP on here, LLDP as well. So you can take a look at if anything is connected to any other devices. You've got the client usage chart down here at the bottom, a list of clients that are on the network and how much usage they're all using. And if I go over to the left side here, you could take a look at the LAN IP address and shows you the public IP address, how this thing is getting out, and then the serial numbers. The one cool thing here is that it's showing you your Catalyst serial number, but it's also showing you your Meraki serial number. So that's the way that it gets represented in the dashboard is through that Meraki serial number there. Uh, I still have the show topology that actually works on here as well, which is really nice. So I click on that, opens up another window, shows my core switch and shows that I have a Meraki camera connected into it. That's shooting my basement floor around my hot water heater. Just in case anything ever blew, I'd be able to see it right there. And then I've also got an MX-75 that is plugged in right now, but I have not started really messing around with that. So that's on there too. So I'm going to go back to my main page over here. And if I scroll back up to the top, a couple things that over here, I can click on ports. It's going to load up all my switch ports. And I mentioned before, you know, we are running CDP, LLDP. So take a look at that. I have a Cisco wireless LAN controller running on that port right there. And I've got some other devices on here as well. Take a look at the status of it all. You can take a look at how much throughput each port is utilizing, which VLANs. The ports are on, access ports, trunk ports, you know, all that stuff is going to be represented in here. And if I go back up to the top here, you have the location tab. That's going to show me my topology again that we, that we looked at before. Under tools, so, you know, I can ping from here. I can actually cycle ports if I wanted to. So this is kind of one of the only things that from a configuration standpoint, you're going to be able to do, um, you know, power cycle the port right from here. You can also run a Mac forwarding table report, and this is going to show this right underneath here. So that's it from a high level. Let's go in and take a look at some of that application visibility stuff that you're going to get with DNA Advantage.
Let's move over to the client side of the house. So under network wide, click on clients. And here we can take a look at all my clients over the last day. And you can change this time frame just by going up to the top and selecting last two hours, last week, 30 days, whatever you want to set here. All clients, clients with a policy, switching clients, you know, whatever you can play around with those settings there. Again, this is all stuff that you're going to get out of DNA Advantage. And we can take a look at the application statistics here. So you can see that I've got a lot of RTSP traffic going on. That's from some of my video surveillance cameras. They put a lot of traffic out of my network locally. And underneath that, we can click on the more button and that'll give us a better breakdown of everything that's going on. So there's that RTSP traffic. You can see all the WebEx traffic, Spark video, Spark. Yes, this stuff is still called Spark for some reason, at least according to NBAR. WebEx meetings, all that information is underneath here. So if I want to take a look at, hey, who is doing those WebEx meetings? And go ahead and click on that. And then it shows me the clients underneath that. So I get their MAC address, who the manufacturer of the devices. This is my MacBook Pro. I was on a couple of WebEx meetings today. You can go ahead and click on those as well if you want to get more client detail information. I'm going to go back here real quick just so you, I can finish showing off the main client page here. If I minimize that, Here's a list of all my clients. So I could take a look here at all my clients that I have on my network. I've got a lot. And if I wanted to, I can go in and I can click on some of these clients here. So I know this via the, the IP address, this is my MacBook Pro. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And then again, I get the breakdown. You get the topology at the top here. You can take a look. It's plugged in through my access point uh, on the switch port 4 on my switch. And then we could take a look here at the applications that I've been running over the last day. So you can see a lot of SSL traffic, secure web, Google services. That could be YouTube or that could be you know something else that Google's doing. And I get a lot of information about this client and what activities I was doing on this client. Now, let's switch over. I'm going to have to reboot my switch because I want to show off what you get with Essentials. And we'll come back and we'll show off what you get with DNA Essentials. And we're back with DNA Essentials now. So I'm under switching switches here, just getting the high level. And first off, you can see nothing on this page really changed too much. Still have all the information, MAC address, firmware, clients, usage, serial number, all that's there. Now let's go into this actual switch here. And the first thing you're going to notice is a little bit different is it's actually telling you that you're running DNA Essential mode and you're not going to be able to get all the same information that we just went went over. So from this page, you will get a lot of the same information. You know, you'll still get the IP addresses, the serial numbers. You could still just show the topology. You can still get all the port information. You still get the picture of all the ports and everything. You could still take a look at the different clients here. You can get a more detailed port information here. Again, just like we did on Advantage, location, Topology, which I just showed, and tools, same thing here. We can cycle ports right inside of here. We could take a look at the Mac forwarding table in here as well. So this page, really nothing changes. Where we are going to see some changes, if I go back to network wide and I go to clients, this is where we're going to have missing data. And you can see here, this is when I had Network Advantage running on the switch. And then right here, I turn Network Advantage or DNA Advantage off and I'm on DNA Essentials. And you could start to see that the time period is getting grayed out. So I still have the historical data on here when it was DNA Advantage, but now that it's DNA Essentials, it's not there anymore. So I won't be able to really dig into any client data, how much uh, my MacBook is using of WebEx or Microsoft Teams or whatever the use case is. And that's the big difference here between DNA Essentials and DNA Advantage. So with Essentials, you're going to get some basic telemetry information out of here. We're Advantage. We're really going to be able to pull that NBAR and all that client data out of here for talking about applications. So hopefully this was valuable and you guys kind of can see now, you know, should you have DNA Essentials or should you have DNA Advantage if you want to take advantage of the Meraki dashboard portion here. Now I went through a lot. If there are any questions, please post them below and I will get back to you. And as always, I really appreciate you guys watching these videos.